Hi there and welcome to part 5 in this 5 part series of tutorials all about creating techie sounds inside Massive. For part 3 of this series we did a deep techie sequence and got some really nice positive feedback on that one so I thought I'd expand on that idea a little bit further, do another sequence sound and use the delay effect to modulate them to almost create an automated delay send. So here's the sound we're going to be making. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to hold down C3 on the keyboard and that is it and everything that you're going to hear here is all created with Inside Massive. Okay so let's go ahead and create a new sound and start programming these oscillators. So for oscillator 1 I'm going to have a smooth square. I'm going to move the wavetable position all the way to the left I'm going to take the pitch down minus 7 semitones and keep the intensity on full, keep it on spectrum and take the amp down right to about there and we're going to start modulating shortly. We'll set the oscillators first. So for oscillator 2 I'm going to keep it on square saw 1 but I'm going to move the wavetable position all the way to the left. So we've effectively got two squares here and um, everything else stays the same. Pull the amp down to a similar position move over to the filter section now I'm going to make a set up a daft filter keep the cutoff position in a similar place and then move the resonance right down uh, keep the volume of the filter on full next we need to start modulating really actually let's set up the envelopes just make sure that your envelope is something like that so it's just got a sharp attack and um, the decays around halfway, sustains on full and a little bit of a release so we're not going to clip when we let go of the key and the next thing to start setting up is the modulation so for this first LFO here you can make this into a stepper and sync it and keep the ratio 1 over 16 and then drag this modulator to the pitch of both oscillators and take the modulation amount up by plus 12 so plus 12 semitones and do the same for oscillator 2 and then we need to start setting the stepper here the moment it's not activated so we set it up like this go plus 5 on the second step plus 8 on the third plus 5 on the fourth keep the fifth at zero as is one is keeping it at zero. On the sixth we go plus five again, on the seventh plus eight, on the eighth, ninth and tenth we go plus five, go plus seven on the eleventh step, keep the twelfth step at zero, plus seven again on the thirteenth, and the fourteenth plus five, plus eight on the fifteenth, and then plus twelve or an octave up on the sixteenth. So we've got something like that. It's very quiet at the moment because the amp's turned right down on these oscillators, but we've got a nice melodic rhythm going already. Let's start modulating the cutoff and the amp now. We're going to make this second LFO. We're going to make this a performer. And we're going to sync it again. It's going to be 1 over 16. And this is going to modulate the cutoff frequency like so. And it's also going to modulate the amp of both the oscillators. So you'd have something a bit more like this now. So let's go ahead and start setting up the performer here to get a bit more of an interesting sequence going on with our sound. So I'm going to move this X Phase Seek slider a little bit further up, just to around there. And um, I'm going to program in a pattern within this performer. Okay, so that's our performer set up there. If you want to pause the video at this stage and just copy that little pattern, then go ahead and do so and we'll continue with the sound. So, how I actually created this pattern or got the inspiration for this pattern was using the randomize feature. If you can click this drop down menu here and you have a selection of randomize functions, randomize the levels of the upper performer, the curves, or just both the levels and the curves together or you can do the same for the lower performer or you can do the same for the whole thing and I actually used the randomize function and it and, and then just tweaked it to suit my sound because it used a couple of the shapes I didn't really want like a lot of the reverse shapes and some of these 
um, these ones at the bottom which I didn't really want in the sound because it got a little bit messy but it gave me a bit of inspiration for quite an interesting pattern so I used that randomized function and then tweaked it to to the sound to suit the sound really that's what we have now and having this X fade sequence slider in between the two performer patterns that we've got here we're actually getting some really interesting shapes that you wouldn't be able to get by just having one the top half or the bottom half of the performer activated uh, just sliding in between get a really interesting pattern so that's our performer setup let's go and move on to set up some of the effects now within this sound so for effect one I'm just going to have quite a small reverb just to give the sound a little bit of space dry dry wet slider really low Going to give the sound, the reverb, a little bit of colour, a little bit of top end. Maybe move the size down a little bit. Push the density up there. And for effects two, we're going to have this delay synced, and this is where the sound's going to come together with the automated delay send. So for this delay send, move the dry wet slider right down there. Uh, have it quite low. Uh, the damp, which is the sort of high frequency of the delayed signal, let's kind of keep around about halfway, push up a little bit maybe. Feedback we want quite high really, and we're going to move the left channel to 2 over 16 and the right to 1 over 16. And what we're going to do now is set up a stepper to activate this delay or make the delay effect a little bit more extreme. This third LFO here is going to turn into a stepper going to sync it, the ratio is going to be 1 over 1 and what we're going to do here is on the fourth step going to move it round about to three quarters of the way up, around about 8 will be fine and do the same for the eighth step and same for the twelfth and then maybe all the way up on the sixteenth and now this is going to modulate the sync delay effects that we've set up there so going to drag it over to the dry wet and push the modulation right up to there you know, quite a high modulation and then also on the damp as well just to increase the high frequency and so what's going to happen now is we're almost like we've automated the delay send on this effect here using this stepper so on this fourth step we're going to get a much more extreme delay effect so if I hold the note down now effects there and we could have this more frequent you know if we move the ratio to 1 over 4 or you could have it even less frequent over larger space of bars if you were using this in the track going 2 over 1 or 3 over 1 or 4 over 1 that's our effect set up now and I think that's the sound has almost come together there's one other thing I use for this sound as well is I uh, for the control filter as if you were playing quite high notes with this sound and we didn't want the filter to open too much so what I did for this set one, filter one, I just moved, pulled these down. So basically the cutoff frequency is not going to open up too much when we go, if we start playing a C5 or a C6 note on this sound, it's going to sort of retain it quite nicely. And um, I think that's pretty much everything with the sound now. add a little bit of vibrato to the sound if you wish so let's give it a spin with a beat play behind it and another cool thing with this sound just to give it more vers versatility really is we don't have to keep the the, the, the ratio settings we have for the arpeggiator which is the first LFO and also the performer we can move these around to create any, just a bit more variation with the sequence so That's it, the kind of deep 
sort of techie sequence, arpeggiated sequence with an automated delay send, uh, which is a really cool little technique really for, for using effects in Massive and hopefully watching this tutorial might give you some ideas for you taking that idea, that technique further, maybe using it for kind of a reverb send or just any kind of effect send really. So. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's a relatively complex sound, so any questions you've got about it, just let us know. And um, yeah, I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.